basically we just uh, had this, I mean, we've been working with uh, quantitative immunofluorescence at Dreams Lab for many years now. But yeah, as you know, the fluorescence has the limitation of high fold multiplexing. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to start working with this kind of technology that can give you compartment mentalization, but also the ability of high fold multiplexing. And we kind of started doing this kind of biomarker discoveries in melanoma and also lung cancer, as I will show, and trying to build these specific assays to predict response to, to therapy. Great. Well, with that, let's get your slides up. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to share with you uh, our work that we have been doing related to biomarker discovery in uh, melanoma and lung cancer patients that have been treated with immunotherapy using digital spatial profiling. I'm going to start perhaps with something a little bit less scientific maybe, but I think that it illustrates very well the importance of spatial information. Here you have two histograms that are showing uh, only the color intensity of two masterpieces. One is a Monet and one is a Renoir. Can anyone tell which is which? It's, different. it's difficult, right? If you only have the color intensity, it's quite difficult. Maybe if you are an expert in art, you can tell, but for most of us, you need, the, you need to put there the spatial information. You need to get how the colors are represented in the space, and with that, you can tell which one is which. And actually, this is kind of the principle or what, uh, what happens actually also in tumors. In tumors, it happens a similar thing. If you see here this example, these are lung tumors. On the left-hand side of the slide, there's a tumor uh, that is showing a staining for cytokeratin and pd one And you can see that most of the pd one is co-localizing in cytokeratin-positive tumor cells. But on the right-hand side, you see a completely different story where, where the cytokeratin positive cells are not staining for PDL1 in red, but most of the PDL1 is being stained in the stroma. And actually, if you take a closer look, it's not only in the stroma, but that there are some particular cells in the stroma that are uh, positive for PDL1. And actually, if you put CD68 there, you can tell that actually PDL1 is co localizing mostly with CD68 positive cells in the stroma. And to be able to quantify PDL1 in tumor cells, CD68 macrophages, I think it's important, as I will show you now. And actually, if you even take a closer look to the tumor microenvironment using confocal microscopy, you can tell that even though there is PDL1 that appears to be in the tumor, it's actually some PDL1 within the tumor mass is not coming from the tumor. It's actually coming from macrophages, as you can see here. Uh, pointed with the arrows. Those are macro macrophages that are sitting on top of tumor cells, and those macrophages are expressing PDL1. So, being able to uh, a technology that separates uh, these different compartments and quantifies PDL1 or whatever other target within these different compartments, I think is going to be very important. So this was kind of an uh, introduction, and this, uh, now I'm going to show you the actual results of the first study that we did in collaboration with Nanostring. This was done entirely uh, at Seattle. And we did the, this first biomarker discovery work in a melanoma immunotherapy-treated patients. We had a cohort of 60 patients uh, that are represented in a tissue microarray format. You can see here in the left-hand side the clinical characteristics of these patients, just to highlight that half of them received uh, anti-PD-1 monotherapy and half of them received PD-1 checkpoint block blockade plus CTLA-4 checkpoint blockade. And this is the panel that we, uh, that we used for this uh, first biomarker discovery. It has a total of 44 uh, markers, markers that are related to oncogenic signaling, such as beta-catenin or MIG, markers that are related to T-cell infiltration, CD8, CD4, markers that are related to the status of those cells, if they are proliferating, grand sign B, and also markers related to antigen presentation machinery, among, among many others. So we stain those markers simultaneously in the same tissue section. I'm showing here how we did the compartment uh, definition using co-localization of this fluorescent signal. On the left-hand side, you can see how the tumor looks on the HNE, and at the bottom, you can see how the tumor looks after we put the visualization markers. In this case, we used three different uh, visualization antibodies to highlight three different compartments. The first one is uh, CD100B and BML17. 
This is to highlight melanocytes. We used another antibody, anti-CD45, to highlight leukocytes that are infiltrating the tumor. And a third antibody, which is a CD68 uh, antibody, to highlight macrophages. And we did uh, three different compartments by binarizing the fluorescent signal coming from each of the different antibodies. So you can see here that we did the melanocyte compartment in green, we did the leukocyte compartment in pink, and we did the CD68 compartment in blue. So now we can quantify all those 45 markers in these three different compartments. And I'm gonna share with you some, some data that we found uh, just to highlight some of the most important uh, findings that we got. For example, in this case, we are seeing that beta-2 microglobulin in macrophages predicts or is associated with progression-free survival and overall survival and then under uh, immunotherapy for melanoma patients. But interestingly, this only happens when beta-2 microglobulin is quantified in macrophages, but it doesn't predict that sensitivity or it's not that sensible when you quantify those in tumor cells, actually. It doesn't show significance when you quantify it in tumor cells, but it shows significance when you quantify them in macrophages. And if we go to a, another component of the uh, antigen presentation machinery, interestingly, it happens the other way around. HLADR associates with outcome when, you, when, when it's expressed in melanocytes, but not when it's expressed in CD68. And this kind of shows you the importance of uh, separating tumor and stromal elements. And um, probably one of the most interesting findings in this study was the, we found that pdl one expressed in macrophages was associated with outcome under immunotherapy, but it was not when pdl one was being uh, scored or quantified in tumor cells. The sensitivity when we scored the pdl one in CD68 was much higher and actually was statistically significantly associated with outcome, and it was not in tumor cells. Again, showing this important of separating tumor and stromal elements. This is kind of a summary of all the markers that we found to be associated with outcome in the univariate uh, analysis. A total of 13 were associated with outcome for progression-free survival. Of course, you have to take into consideration that this is a pilot study. Most of these markers need to be validation, need, need to be validated, they need to be tested for multiple uh, comparisons, but at least it shows you the potential of uh, finding in a single assay a lot of uh, marks that can actually predict the response. And I'm highlighting in red those that uh, were associated with outcome in the multivariate analysis and, al and after multiple test correction. And here again, PDL1 was showing that the PDL1 for overall survival in macrophages but not in tumor cells was showing uh, outcome association in the, uh, in the multivariate analysis again. So just to uh, give a quick summary of uh, the first study that we did, we, we screened for 44 markers simul simultaneously and they found 13 and 16 markers in separate compartments that were individually predictive of progression-free survival and overall survival. And two of them were found to be actually independently associated with outcome in the multivariate analysis. This finding of the PDL1 expressing macrophages but not melanocytes can have actually clinical implications because we, we can actually build more sensitive assays if we, if we measure PDL1 in macrophages. We are kind of seeing a similar thing also in some pilot studies that we are doing in lung cancer. So this, this can be something that could be important. And I think it's also important to discard those markers that apparently are not going to be uh, used for prediction purposes. Mm, I mean, we found K67, Vista, and, and many other markers that were not associated with response. And to be able to to answer this question in a single assay, I think it's also important. And as I was saying, this pilot study in melanoma kind of illustrates the potential of simultaneously evaluate a range of markers and construct new predictive signature, which is actually currently in process. So, and actually this, uh, this kind of technology enables us to build new hypotheses as well. So, and with this finding of the PDL1 in macrophages, we, maybe we, we, we need to start putting macrophages in these pictures because in these pictures we usually see tumor cells suppressing T cell function, but maybe we'll have to start thinking about macrophages as a kind of important cells uh, driving the T cell infiltration into tumors, and that's 
this technology kind of enabled us to build this hypothesis that we are now trying to validate in other tumors and mechanistically validate as well. So now after this uh, first collaboration that we did with a uh, nanostream that, as I told you before, was done entirely in Seattle, now we got the instrument at Yale. It's an earlier version of the instrument, a beta instrument, that we got since December. And we're starting to work in similar projects also, uh, mainly in lung cancer. This is the panel that uh, we are using. It has a total of 40 markers. We are focusing, as I said, mainly in lung cancer, also doing mostly TMA, TMA work. We are doing, in this case, four independent compartments, similarly to what I showed before for melanoma. We are doing a first compartment, which is the epithelial tumor cell compartment, the macrophage compartment with CD68, the leukocyte compartment with CD45. And also in those cases that uh, we see that there are still cells there, uh, we kind of create a fourth compartment uh, getting the rest of the uh, stromal cells. And the very first thing that we uh, did when, when we got the instrument at Yale was to, we wanted to make some kind of on-site validation of the technology. So for that, we tested whether the collection of the order of the different compartments could affect quantification. Because we wanted to see, if, it, if you think about it, if the, if, the compartment, if the compartmentalization process is not very accurate, or if the laser, the resolution is not very accurate, we could have a risk of bleed over in the quantification between compartments that are sitting very in, in very close proximity. And this would lead to an overrepresentation of targets that are collected first as opposed to targets that are collected last. So we just took two serial sections and we tested two different collection orders between the different compartments, going for, from CD68, CD45, CK and rest of stroma, and then a second order of collection going from CD45, C68, rest of stroma, and CK. And then compare the quantification between the two different collection orders to see whether we, we, we were going to find a difference or not. So this is how we are doing the uh, compartment definition uh, in this uh, lung cancer uh, TMAs. On the left-hand side is how the tumor looks uh, with the fluorescence image. So we are currently uh, drawing ROIs of 600 microns in order to take the whole TMA spot. And as you can see there, as I told you before, we are doing four compartments. In this case, you only see three because the tumor, the stroma is almost completely full of CD45 and CD68 positive cells. And on the right hand side, you can see how the compartments look. In green is the tumor compartment, in yellow, the CD45 compartment, and in blue, the CD68 compartment. And when we compare the collection order, actually we saw that there is no difference in the quantification uh, if you change the order of collection, which I think is a strong validation as well for the technology because this tells you that the compartment assignment is very accurate and also the uh, resolution of the, of the laser is, is, very, is very accurate because we don't see any difference in the quantification between the two different collection orders. And I think this was an important validation for us. And after we saw this, we are kind of now starting to generate uh, some actual data with our experiments. And actually, with, uh, our experiments are focused on a similar uh, project that we did in melanoma, but in this case, in lung cancer. We have another uh, TMA uh, that contains tumors from patients that have received immunotherapy for a stage 4 disease. You can see here, it's called TMA 404. And this is the clinical characteristics of these patients. And again, we are using the same panel that I told you before, and with these three or four different compartments. And yeah, this is what I want to, to share with you today. <laughs>